Welcome into another episode of Well.com, everyone. Today, we are going to drop some theory on y'all as well as lay down some slick dimes when it comes to outside corner joints and gas metal arc welding with the short circuit transfer. Now, when I refer to the pattern of stacking dimes, you can get this with a lot of different processes. People that don't even weld love seeing this. They think it aesthetically looks really pleasing, looks really nice, but we still need to study a little bit of the theory in order to know how to make that happen. Looking at the outside corner joint, which is what we're gonna talk about today, it's where the two plates line up in the corners, like this. It could either be a closed corner where they're overlapping or an open corner where you have those two corners touching. If we look at a couple of these weld symbols, we can see this open corner joint has a little less to there because it's pretty easy to get the complete joint penetration that we're looking for here in the tail of the weld symbol. It's basically us putting a weld right in here. We really don't need to know the weld size because it's telling us we want a convex profile to that weld pull. Now with the closed corner joint, if you were to just go put a weld right here, you're not going to get complete joint penetration. For this example, I've got a J groove here, a single J. That weld nugget's going to sit right in here hopefully burn through that little sixteenth of an inch of that J that we got and then it wants a flush contour so maybe we have to go and grind this down a little bit but again we got complete joint penetration without having to do you know just the simple open corner now as far as our voltage and our wire feed speed you don't really know what you're going to set that to unless you have the material thickness in your wire diameter we're going to be using quarter inch plate with 035 wire so we're going to be running somewhere between 20 and 23 volts. As far as our wire feed speed, we want to starve that a little bit because we don't want our weld size to get too big. So maybe we go down on our wire feed speed to somewhere around 250 to 300. I'm going to recommend for this specific weld in the short circuit MIG transfer to pull a drag angle on this in order to get a higher crown. If I push it, I'll typically get left with maybe a flatter weld. As far as our work angle and our contact to work distance, this is all gonna pretty much stay the same uh, depending on where we're at. We're about 3 8 on our contact tip to work distance. Our work angle is gonna change depending on where we're working on our part. Our travel speed is gonna directly correlate to our different techniques. We can either use a whip technique where we go in and out of our puddle. Ultimately, we're just going forward and then pushing that puddle back on top of itself in order to make that big ripple and that big roll. The cursive ease is my preference, where we come in and kind of do these lowercase e's, but I will kind of go back and forth between the whip and the cursive ease, depending on where I'm at on the part. Now, as far as crescents go, you can do a lot of different methods, but really coming out of your puddle and pushing back into it is how you're going to get those ripples. Not to say you come too far out of your puddle, that's where you have issues. If you want to study up more on weld symbols or the gas metal arc welding process, we've got a bunch of great courses inside the American Welding Program. Whether you're an instructor or you're a student, or maybe you're just a DIY hobbyist and you want to get more of the theory under your belt. At the American Welding Program, you can find it all there. Now taking a step over to the Everlast Thunder 255 MTS, MTS standing for MIG Take Stick. It is a multi-process machine. We're going to be running somewhere around 21 volts is somewhere where I think is going to be nice and around 280 is where we're going to start and we're going to set that trigger to 4T so when I hit the trigger the wire is just going to run on its own which is nice because we do want to have kind of seamless welds we don't want to have a bunch of restarts otherwise it just doesn't look as good so that 4T trigger will help so here we have our part that's ready to weld we've got it all fit and tacked up we did CNC plasma cut this, so we did need to clean up all the edges with the 3M fiber disc, that 36 plus. We want to have some good anti-spatter on the nozzle and on our contact tip, as well as some anti-spatter on our part and table. We want to have nice stacked ripples for people to see. Now for the first weld here, we've got us a 2F weld. This is technically a horizontal weld to make, so we want to favor the top plate just a little. And what we're going to do on this first side is Try to test out the difference between our pull and our push. First off, let's pull it. Shake some of that rust off. Oh yeah, remember that 4T trigger? The wire's just gonna run on its own. I forgot that was even on. Now looking at this pool bead, it looks like 
It looks pretty good. I would say it looks hot. And the reason why I say it looks a little hot is these spots right in here where I'm getting that little tidge of undercut. Now my gun angle needs to be really favoring up here more than it does need to be down there. But because of that little bit of undercut and then the shape of our ripples, they're really, they get to a, a little bit of a point, right? And they're starting to sag a little bit more than I'd want. So what we're gonna only do is stay on that cooler side of our voltage range. Let's do 20 volts and 250. And now we're gonna push. Now what I do like about pushing is we can see a little bit easier where we're going, but I just don't get to see what I'm making behind myself as easy with that nozzle in the way, but let's put a weld in. We're still doing that cursive E pattern. You can notice that push angle, we're gonna have a little bit more spatter. To get the right contour and what I'm looking for, I needed to turn those bolts down. Oh, damn 4T trigger, I keep forgetting, man. Now, even though the drag travel angle, it was a little bit hotter than I'd like, I still felt like it still kept the bead profile, higher convex bead profile that I was looking for. So I think now that I've got my voltage and my amperage a little bit lower, maybe it'll look a little bit better as we do the rest of them. Again, that's just my preference on how I would do this. Uh, and I think the evidence is clear here where we actually turn things down to do this push angle. I've got a flatter bead. I actually have a little bit more underfill in a couple spots, especially right here at the end where I'm under the corners of that and I, it could have could just slowed down and probably filled things in. But I like a drag angle because of the bead profile that it's going to be giving me. And because the joint configuration is corner to corner, it doesn't matter whether I push or pull, I'm gonna get complete joint penetration. Now here on this side, let's discuss the importance of fed up and travel speeds, right? Too many times do I see students when they, when they witness, whether it be their instructor or what they see on YouTube and they see someone doing the circles, the cursive ease, the whip motions. As soon as they go to try to replicate it, they're just making the motion. They're just doing it to do it. Watch the puddle. Depending on what voltage range you choose to be in is obviously gonna change your travel speed. We want to make sure that we're still staying in our puddle as we do these motions. We're only gonna just, just almost disconnect from that puddle as we come forward, digging into the root of the joint and then pulling ourselves back on it. Now, in order to make sure that bead looks uniform all the way around, which is so satisfying, we need to have proper fit up. If we look right here, if you have big tacks in the way, your weld size is gonna be different. You're gonna need to get in there and clean those up. And if your joint size is not the same, where I've got more weld joint here than here, then that bead profile is gonna look different. I'm really looking to make sure it fills up past those two edges of our outside corner joint. But I'm trying to favor the top edge because I know gravity is still going to want to pull to that bottom toe of our fillet weld. I'm never disconnecting my wire from that weld puddle. Did it again. We're gonna make a little tie-in here. So I'll show you what a tie-in will look like as well as this little bit of the inside corner where we made kind of a mess with the fit up. I don't know if I'll be able to get a good arc shot with my hands and elbows and stuff in a way, but what we're gonna be looking to do with this wire anyway, we're gonna start way up here. And as soon as that arc establishes, we'll run back and just trace that crater. Remember we're doing cursive E, so we're gonna come from the top and then drop back in to keep doing our pattern. We have a lot of room right in here to make a lot of fillet weld, but then as we progress, the bottom edge starts to disappear and we still have that higher top edge, which is not a great combination for a 2F weld. And then we run into a bunch of tacks, so no room for our weld whatsoever before we get back on track. I remembered to let go of my trigger this time. Let's take a look at that bead profile there. The tie in here, that looks pretty all right. You just kind of take some of that schmutz away. It looks like it's a very clean tie in. As we go to try to change our angle, we, there's so much room there because this plate's kind of out. So it has even more filling to do in this corner than say this corner. And that's evident. 
You can see we're underfilled with a tidge of undercut. They're usually both kind of together a lot of times. Now, as we get to the other end, you can see the undercut disappears because we have less to fill, but then we're packed in in this corner and we probably get a little bit lack of fusion there on that top edge because that weld couldn't wet out to get to that corner. That's why it's so important to have good fit up when you go to have a part. If you want a good, consistent, clean part with a smooth weld all the way across, you need good, clean, consistent fit up. Let's finish this up, see if I can get you a better arc shot on this tie-in and continue on with my life. Always evaluate your work. Every bead you make, read it. Take a look at it. What can you do to change it? Colder you are, the slower you're probably gonna end up having to go than compared to the faster and hotter version of that. You gotta be evaluating your welds and telling yourself what pattern you wanna do and you need to stick to that pattern. That's it for today's episode. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you wanna see some of the gear that we wore in this, today's episode, like the yellow gloves that made me look like a Dr. Seuss character, or maybe the outlaw leather hoods or the slick FR gear that we wear from Ariat to the Everlast welding machines, we appreciate you all for watching. We'll see you all in the next weld.